This is the SHO module. If you look at it carefully, you'll see that there are two brown capacitors. We'll put those to the left, and then we'll align the row of pins along row F, and justify it all the way over to column 30. So now when you plug this thing in, the lower row plugs into row F from 30 down to 23, it looks like. Yeah. And then the upper row is in row I, and it goes from 30 to 23 as well. If we tilt it back and look at it straight down, you'll see that it's lined up in row I and row F from 30 through 23. The next thing we're going to do is to power up the module. We're going to select three different colored wires, small red, small orange, and small yellow. One of your boxes contains the small red and small orange, and the small yellow is in the other box full of jumpers. The next thing we're going to do, since all of these circuits are negative ground circuits, is ground the brass tray, which with that black socket there, to the black line, which is going to be minus 9 volts. Now the entire enclosure is grounded. Next we grab an orange jumper, and we're going to hook up negative power to the SHO module. That means we're going to connect from the black line over to L30. The whole black row all the way across from left to right is minus 9 volt power. It goes solid all the way across. The red power, however, the positive power, is split in the center. We'll, we'll put a jumper in there later. But right now we're going to give positive power to the SHO module. Grab a yellow jumper and plug it in so that it straddles between L29 and the nearest hole in a red line. So if you go to diagonal across over one, it should be just perfect to stretch across there. Now we're going to grab an orange jumper so that we can finish the red power going all the way across. We're going to straddle that little break there. That open line, that open part in the line indicates there's a break in that connection. You want to connect it across. That's in case you have to have two different power supplies for some reason. We won't need two different power supplies for this project. It's all just going to be one common power line. Next, we grab two solid silver jumpers. They're the smallest ones. We're going to insert these right next to the module. There are two spots on the module that say JMP by two neighboring pins in the upper row. You can see those on the module overview sheet very clearly. The first one's going to go between J28 and J27. And if your fingers aren't as small as Ashley's here, you might want to use a tiny pliers or a uh, tweezer to get them into place. The second one goes in from J23 to J24. The purpose of these jumpers is to turn this module into a standard SHO. In a future video segment, we're going to show you techniques where you can pull these, mod these uh, jumpers out and change the sound of the module by using external components that are plugged in in place of the jumpers. If you're having problems getting the jumpers in place, use the small screwdriver to tighten them down a little bit. Next, we're going to connect up the gain control. On the top it's called boost, so I should call it the boost control, I suppose. We'll need three gray wires. Gain control's on this side. It's a C5K pot, and we're going to run three gray wires over the edge of the uh, experimenter socket, over the edge of the tray, down to the socket on the pot. That's how we're going to connect it to the module. So grab three of the gray ones, and they connect up in order, left to right. The holes on the pot are going to line up with the first three holes at the edge of the experimenter socket. Starting with the far left hole on the pot, which is labeled CW, which means counter, or I mean, see, it doesn't mean counterclockwise, it means clockwise. That's where the wiper is connected when it's turned all the way clockwise. We'll plug that into the corner hole, A30. Next, the middle connection on the pot, which is called the wiper, that's the part that moves when you turn the knob. That is going to go into the second hole. A29. You'll need to tighten up the wires against that edge every time you bend them around when they're brand new. The third hole in the pot 
which is the counterclockwise connection, goes into the third hole in row A, A28. You can use the screwdriver to tighten the wires down. You can see the CW there. That's the clockwise side of the pot. When you turn the knob clockwise, the wiper goes all the way over to that clockwise pin. It wipes its way around and touches that clockwise pin. That's how you know which end of the pot is which. Of course, you can easily hook up the pot backwards, and then it'll turn in the wrong direction, which is uh, a good sign that you hooked it up backwards if you happen to notice that one of your controls is turning in the wrong direction. Next, we're going to take the experimenter socket part of the Invento box and set it on the rest of the enclosure. The knobs lock right onto the stomp switches if you set it down just right, and it sits there so it's easy to hook up the cables that go into the rest of the box. If you look in there, there's a work light. If you push that switch on the far left, you can see a little better inside. And you can see these different sockets that are inside there. Now that bottom row, are the that's the input and output connections and the power connection. And those are the ones you're going to use most of the time. The upper row of jacks is for those uh, pots and LEDs that are on the rest of the enclosure. They're kind of extras. You don't use them very often. Um, we're going to use E2 type cables to hook up the input and output connections to the stomp switch. And stomp switch for channel 2 uh, starts on the third jack. That's the input jack. So you count over three. One, two, three. And then you look at that. There's a little plastic uh, guide that sticks up out of the jack. You can see there's a slot it has to slip into, so you have to turn it so that that little plastic guide is facing up, and put it right into jack number three. And then sometimes it helps to use your fingernail to push it in place. Or you can use a small tool if you need to, but you can usually do it with your finger. And we'll put in another E2 type cable into the jack number four, counting from the left. And that's going to be the output connection. Now what these two cables do is they connect up stomp switch number two to your circuit so that you can switch your circuit in and out of the signal path. Next, we're going to hook up the power cable and we're going to use a type I cable. You'll note that you can see both the red and black wires on that one for the full length of the cable. That's because it's unshielded. It's going to go in that final jack Make sure the key is pointing up when you push it in. The reason we use the gray shielded cables for audio signals is to keep down any potential for squealing or feedback or crosstalk or any of the other evils that can creep into audio signals. Now when you're hooking up the power connections, you can choose any of the jacks in the red row for the red wire and any of them for the black wire, any of the, any of the jacks in the black row for the black wire because they're all connected together. We just happen to choose the first one on the far right for the red and the fourth one over for the black in this case. You can use those if you wish. Now it's powered up. Now to hook up the uh, input to the Invento box, we take the input jack connection there. The, f the left one is the input. And if Jason could uh, pan the camera up a little bit, you can see the third connection there is the input to the module. So we're going to plug in the red wire from the input cable into L25. And the black wire we're going to plug into one of the holes in the black row. In this case we chose column 17, but it really doesn't matter which one you plug it into as long as you've got the uh, cable neatly connected so that it's not going to be too tangly when you put it back into the box. Ooh, that's a little out of focus. Now we're looking at uh, the fourth connection there from the left, which is column 26. We take the output cable, plug the red connection from the output cable into L26, and the black connection, which is a ground shield, into the black row anywhere. We chose column 18, but you can choose any one you want, whatever makes it neat for you. Now, magically, at this point, the SHO is complete. There's only one little thing to check, one last little detail. There are two switches on the inside of the Invento box two tiny black switches. Ashley's pointing at the one on the left right there. That's the one that 
lets you choose whether you've got two channels or one channel of operation. We need both channels operating, so we switch that one to the left. And then there's another switch on the right, and that one turns off and on the LED on the uh, stop switch on the channel two, and that one we want to make sure the LED is on, so we turn that one to the left as well. Both those switches should be to the left if you're using two channels. And voila, the SHO is complete. Yay. <laughs>